Okay, this is not the same as it was. It's looser here. Is it looser there? Yeah, it's not. Up. <laughs> uh, All right, so here we are. This is the fifth episode of the Modcast, and what we're going to be discussing here is how we should study our Bibles and why we should study our Bibles. Right now, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out our Instagram, and check out our website. And as well as this video being on our YouTube, we'll also have this podcast on all other audio platforms, the link to those will be down in the description. So before we jump into how we should study our Bibles and why we should study our Bibles, let's open up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time to be able to um, discuss more about the truths of your word. And your word is so precious and it's such a key aspect to our faith, Lord. Studying it produces joy because we learn more about you, God. And how we should study it can sometimes be a daunting task, but Lord, you equipped us with everything we need to do that, so help us to gain, gain a better understanding of these things that you equipped us with and use them to our advantage. In your name we pray, amen. Okay, so to start off here, the Bible, 66 books, we have the Old Testament and the New, and a lot of times whenever people jump into the Bible. A lot of times they hear from the gospel. They hear a lot of the main verses. A lot of people know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world verse. And we usually think, okay, yeah, I know the Bible generally pretty well. I'm going to church every Sunday. I'm hearing from the pastor. I'm good to go. I'm involved in fellowship, but You know, we're not really ready to give that um, defense, that apologia that we talked about in a previous, previous episode on why we have hope. But then the question is, okay, well, why should we study this? And how should we study this? Because it's something that can seem like a very useless task. It's, oh, this is a book. But we know in Second Peter, at the end of the first chapter, that we know that it was written by men who were inspired by the Holy Spirit. And that changes everything about what's in here. This is God's word because God writ- wrote it through men. And a verse that we're going to look at first is Second Timothy 3, 16 through 17, which reads, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. And this verse pretty much tells us exactly what scripture is. It's God it's God breathed and it's profitable for many things as read in that verse. And so this is this verse right here is a very good reason for why we should study our Bibles. We want to live more like Christ. As Christians were called in Romans 8, verse 29, we are called to be conformed more into the image and likeness of Jesus, God's Son. And we can't do that if we're not studying His Word. And we need to be in His Word daily, not every Sunday, and it be pharisaical and just check it off. And what I mean by pharisaical is whenever you look in the gospels, you see the Pharisees who were the religious leaders and they kept everyone underneath the law. Whenever Jesus came to give grace. And a lot of times we can think, oh, we need to show up every Sunday in order to be approved by God. And because that's a very easy notion that our flesh falls into is wanting to work for things. And so sometimes a reason whenever we're studying the Bible is we think, okay, I need to, you get caught up in, okay, checking it off. You know, I read it today. I read my little devotion on my phone or I opened up and I read a Psalm real quick before I got on the bus and went to school, stuff like that. But how many of us are really taking the time to sit down, getting rid of distractions and studying the word of God and communing with him? 
daily. And how many of us are allowing this to transform our lives as we just talked about in 2 Timothy? How many of us are really looking for the correction and for being able to be trained in righteousness? How many of us are just having it go through one ear and out the other? How many of us are really seeking in prayer? Okay, let me look how this can be applied to my life. Because it says that the man of God does these things so that he may be competent and equipped for every good work. And so this is a very good reason why we should study the Bible is it help, it conforms us more into the image and likeness of Christ. It sanctifies us further. It teaches us more about this God that we're serving because we need to know we need to know who our God is. Just like my like a husband and wife, whenever they get married, they know each other in this very intimate level. We need to know our God in this very intimate level. And I'm not saying it's a marriage type of relationship because it's not. But it needs to be with that kind of intimacy where God's not something that we only see on Sunday. God's something that we're seeing every single second of every day. That's something that we can really easily get caught up in. Is, okay, God's only here whenever I'm at church during worship. God's only here whenever, you know, something goes wrong in my life and I need him. And that's very cliche to say, oh, we only come to God whenever we need him. But it's true and we do that. But whenever we're in his word, which is a reason why, is we see why we should honor and praise our Lord, not just whenever we're in the valleys, but when we're on the highest of mountaintops, is because he is a God who is worthy of our praise. And why we should study this scripture is because we learn about it. In Psalm 119.9, it says, how does a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. Now, this is a question I have. How can we live according to God's word if we don't know his word? This is why we ought to study it, because whenever we know his word, then we can apply it to our lives and keep our way pure. And we need to keep our way pure because in Titus, it talks about how we should live lives that people cannot criticize and point out and say, hey, I thought this person was a Christian. Well, the way they're living is in a way worthy that I um, see fit for changing my life. We're called to be holy. And not just holy, we're called to be set apart, set apart for God, for God's kingdom, for his purposes, for his will in our lives. This is a reason why we should study it. So now for a second verse for why we should study the Bible, we're going to hit Joshua 1, 8, which reads, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. When does it say we should study our Bibles? Does it say we should only study our Bibles or not study, but meditate, study, go hand in hand? When does it say we should do that? Does it say only Sunday? Does it say only a little bit in the morning? Half-heartedly? No, it says we should meditate on it day and night. And obviously it's like, oh, wow. This seems like a hyperbole saying, how can I, how can I do this day and night? I have, I have tasks I have to do. Yes, we do. But here is a way that I think is a very good structure to how we go about our walks as Christians. We read the word of God. We study the word of God. And then we, through prayer in the word of God, if we're generally going to read our Bible and study it, it goes hand in hand with prayer. As we're reading, we should constantly be praying. We shouldn't just read not only for intellectual knowledge, but we should read to commune with God and have our hearts be transformed. So reading the word is first. Then praying on what we're reading in the word, digesting it, as it talks about in Psalm 1, where we're going to go right now. Psalm 1 talking about the righteous man versus the wicked. The righteous man meditates on God's law day and night. And what that word there in the Hebrew means meditate is what a cow does. A cow chews its food, spits it up, And then eats it again and keeps chewing on it more. That's what that Hebrew word means. Meditate in Psalm 1. So what's that a picture of? We're to read God's word, chew on it mentally, think, okay, what is this passage saying? 
spit it back up in a sense and then go back at it again and keep searching it that's what that word meditate means now i can tell you that word meditate that that's not just hearing from sunday just from our pastor that's not meditation that's great we need to be in fellowship and learning from learning from our pastors and fellow believers but we need to have our own devotional time, our own time with the Lord. And this is why we should study the word is because we want to be able to live lives that are set apart for God. And we want to be able to know him above all, why we should study our Bibles is to know God. That word, that phrase right there, just to know God carries a lot of baggage to know God, because that is our creator. Psalm 139 talks about, Whenever we truly understand where we fall in in the kingdom of God, it is just phew, gives you a sense of just relief because you know that you know that you are right and that you are in the right place and in the right the hands the hands of your creator and loving God. And you cannot know that by just occasionally hearing spurts of biblical text. You need to seek it out yourself. And now the more important, not more important, equally as important question is how, how should we do this? How do we study our Bible? Whenever I'm reading about Assyria and Babylon and all of these dates in the Bible and all of these laws in Leviticus, how am I supposed to study that as a new Christian? How am I supposed to just jump into that and study that? I don't, I don't like his, like, I'm just, I'm just raising scenarios. What if there's someone, Oh, I don't like to learn about history. Well, the Bible's packed with history. That goes again to why you should study it. Whenever you understand um, what God's doing in our lives and understand the purpose he has for us, you're going to want to know what's going on in the bi biblical narrative. And going along with how here, how should we study it? When do we study it? You know, some people, generally it's different for each person. We're just going to knock a few, you know, in Proverbs, it talks about giving the Lord our first fruits. When we first wake up, what's the first thought that comes into our mind? In today's age of technology, we are constantly distracted by our phones. And it's like, think about it. Think about it as a Christian. When you're studying your Bible, what are you looking at? Do you have your phone right there buzzing constantly with uh, whoever it may be to contacting you and you're more concerned about waiting for that person? whenever you're reading through the book of Romans, studying it, or what are you more concerned about? This is a problem um, a lot with studying the Bible is just how we should study the Bible is we get very distracted easily. So how we should study it, this is one way that we should study the Bible or how we should study the Bible. Void of distractions. Put Get alone with God. There's very few times when you think about it where we're just in silence just alone with the Lord, just studying the scriptures. And a lot of times we're so stressed, have so much anxiety about things in the future, things that are coming up. But a lot of times when you just sit there and allow yourself to think, okay, right now in this present moment, there's nothing wrong. I'm with the Lord. I'm communing with him. I, we're usually stressing about things that haven't even came yet. When we're with the Lord, we see, okay, we're good. And so that's a way of how we should study it is void of distractions. You're not going to be able to get that whenever you have your phone giving off a notification every 10 seconds. Another way for how we should study our Bible is have a systematic way of studying it. Whenever you're going through the prophets, which is a part in the Old Testament that's very often neglected because prophecy, you know, makes up one third of the Bible. It's usually very often time neg neglected, like... Who's, who even wants to read the book of Haggai or Habakkuk? Who really wants to read that? Well, if you read in um, Romans, Paul quotes from Habakkuk. The righteous will live by faith. And we see that a lot of times that these portions of the Bible are just neglected. And that's because people don't know how to study their Bible. And so what we need is a systematic way of aligning things. We need to be able to say, okay, there's this date in Isaiah. This lines up with something in 2 Kings. But then you look in your Bible and you're like, okay, what? 
Second Kings is here. How is that lining up with something here? And you're going all over the place, and you're looking at Nehemiah. You're like, Nehemiah's over here. How is this take in place during Daniel? Well, we have many great resources due to the same technology that's distracting us. So we can also use that technology to figure these things out very easily. Um, yes, I was being sarcastic. But whenever we do this... Um, there's many great ways that we can hit these things and see, okay, 586 BC, Babylon, Babylonian exile, see whenever they're out of captivity, see whenever Persia comes in, see all of these dates and then see, okay, this is what's happening in the gospel leading up to Jesus's crucifixion. Every place in this Bible, what I mean by systematic way of studying the Bible is taking certain categories in the Bible and aligning them all up. This goes with this, this goes with this, this goes with this, this goes with this. Makes it a much more comprehensible way of study for us mere finite human beings who sometimes have a really hard time being able to digest passages in the Bible. And so how we should study it is void of distractions in a way of, way of systematically studying it. And another way of how we should study our Bibles is we should study our Bibles with a sense that this is the most important thing that we are going to do that day. This is our sword. And we know that we, Paul talks about how we don't fight with weapons of the, of the world. We fight with spiritual weapons that God equips us with. And we know in Ephesians that we have the armor of Christ. And this is just something from personal experience, I think, is the praying on each morning, the armor of Christ, Warren Wearsby talks about it in one of his books, is very impactful with seeing, okay, helmet, breastplate, so on and so forth, praying those on, seeing, oh, okay, this is what, this is what I'm going into. I'm going into a world each morning that's presenting me with all of these different challenges, and Satan is the ruler of this world and God's ultimately sovereign and over it. But for right now, until Jesus comes again, Satan has a very sh strong um, hold upon us and can manipulate us very easily. And if we're not, if we're not equipped with our armor, now th this goes coinciding exactly with why and how this is why we need to study is because we're also going out into a battlefield and how we study it impacts what we do when we go out in this battlefield, we can make points for why and how, but ultimately they go together. And so how we should study it is a way of knowing, okay, this is the most important thing I'm going to do this day. We do a lot of things in our day, but do we really understand, okay, the morning, whenever I study my Bible, void of distraction, keep that in mind, you're, we're assuming that you're going to do this, that you're studying your Bible void of distraction, you have your scriptures open, you're ready to study it, really to, to digest it, to meditate on it day and night, talking about Joshua. Um, meditate on day and night, Psalm 1, going together with that. Do we realize, okay, this is the most important thing I'm going to do today. That even though this basketball game I have later is a really big game, it's not, an import, it's not near as important as putting on my spiritual armor to be able to go against the spiritual forces of darkness and evil, which are trying to tempt me to reject my creator and loving father who's granted me salvation and who loves me and who cares for me and who wants me to be his. Are we striving? Are we fighting? Are we running the race that Paul talks about and constantly yearning to chastise ourselves further in the faith do we know that that's the most important part and so those are some reasons why and how we should study our bible and there's many many other scriptures just look up why just look up studying the bible and why it talks about why we should you'll find many many verses that we can go over but yeah in terms of how to, cl to close out here is ask someone. It's okay to say, you know, I'm early in my Bible journey. Where should I start? How should I study? And make sure that you're being told 
sound doctrine because study it yourself it talks about in acts how we're called how the people in thessalonica were studying the scriptures and being bereans and what a berean is is someone who thoroughly studies the scriptures and sees okay you tell me this i'm gonna go read the scriptures for myself test it and see if it's see if it's true and so that is another way is for how let's reach out to people that you know maybe can give us some insight and even people that we think, oh, they might not know as much as me. A lot of times they do have new perspectives that will even give you a twist and new flavor to the beautiful scriptures that Christ has bestowed upon us in his book, the Bible. So thank you for tuning in to the fifth Modcast. We'll be uploading weekly on Mondays at noon. And now we have started the new preacher feature, which will be the first Friday of each month. And we're going to be expounding upon this channel in the near future but we hope that you continue to tune in and seek to build um community here with the men and um with the men that we have to be able to cultivate um fruits amongst ourselves fellowship we've already talked about how important it is but really be able to build a strong community here and be able to live that out. So thank you. We'll be back next week on Monday at noon and um, let's go out and let's read our Bibles. Let's study them and let's meditate on them day and night. Peace. Let's get you, man. Thank you for watching this fantastic episode um, where Grant got to explain a little bit and how you should study the word. Um, as mentioned before, please subscribe to the channel. Get into that discussion board below. Um, also linked in the description is our audio platforms, which we're still working on. Um, our website, which we're still working on, so it's not there yet, but should be very soon. And uh, make sure to check out the other videos on the channel. We really appreciate you guys um, just being a part of our community. And we really want to grow it. And we really want to make it something special. So thank you for joining us on this vision. God bless.